Got another exam question on NMR here. So this is number five. There's the questions. If you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. You can see I've already processed this elemental analysis by mass information. So the whole point of that is to get the empirical formula for the compound. So just percentage divided by relative atomic mass gives us the moles. We divide by the smallest and we get the simplest whole number ratio. So it was 4 to 8 to 1. So the empirical formula for the ester is C4H8O. So what we're going to do now is calculate the relative mass of that. So the MR of the empirical formula comes out at 72. So move on to the mass spectrum now. And we're going to look at this peak here. That's the molecular ion peak. So this peak furthest to the right, this molecular ion peak, has an M over Z value of 144. So the molecule has an MR effectively of 144. Its empirical formula mass is 72. So how do they compare with each other? Well, that's twice that. So the actual molecular formula must be double this, C8H16O2. So now we've established the molecular formula, we're going to go to the proton NMR spectrum. That's where the bulk of the information is. And we're going to take each signal in turn and do the usual thing, talk about the type of signal that we've got. So the splitting pattern tells you what's adjacent, remember. We're going to talk about the peak area, and we're going to talk about the shift value. Remember, this is an ester, so we have this functional group in the molecule. Okay, so starting with this signal here at around about 4.2, you can see it's a quartet. So there's an adjacent CH3 group. It's got an area of 2. So there's two protons that cause this signal. And the shift value is H to C to single bond O. So obviously talking about a proton on a carbon here next to that oxygen. So now we've established that, we can actually draw that little part of the molecule up. So we know that we've got... Um, Hydrogen bonded to a carbon, which is singly bonded to an oxygen. There's two hydrogens in that environment from that peak area of two. And we know there's an adjacent CH3 because of the splitting pattern of the quartet. So we've actually finished off the right-hand side of this molecule. It's going to look like that. So if we move on to this signal now, so we'll say that's a delta 2.2 ppm. That's a singlet, so there are no adjacent hydrogens. It's got an area of two, so there's two hydrogens causing the signal, so it's CH2, and the shift is H to C to C double bond O, so H to C to that C double bond O. So just like before, we can draw up this little part of the molecule, so we know we've got two hydrogens on a carbon, with no adjacent hydrogens. So this carbon here, we can't put any hydrogens directly onto it, otherwise they would have split the signal for these two. The other thing we know is that there's a C double bond over there. So we're going back to our ester group. Obviously we're talking about this bit here. So moving on to this signal now, this is what, 1.3 ppm? So it's a triplet. So there are two hydrogens adjacent to the ones causing this signal. It's got an area of three, so it's a CH3 group causing the signal. And the shift is saying that it's an HCR environment. So basically, we're talking about these protons here have caused that signal, this one here. And you can see there's three of them, and they're adjacent to two, so we'll split into a triplet and this is just an HCR environment. Okay, so moving on to this final signal now, this one at 0.9 ppm. So it's a singlet. So there are no adjacent hydrogens. It's got an area of nine. Now there's no such thing as CH9, 
So what this is, is three equivalent CH3 or methyl groups of the same carbon and the shift value HCr again. So we're obviously talking about what's bonded to this carbon here. So what we've established from what we've just said is that there are CH3 groups of this carbon and they would appear as a singlet as they're too far away to be split by those and they would have an area of nine and they would appear in the HCR environment. So that is the structure of the ester. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is just go back to the mass spectrum and try and identify the possible identity of one of the fragment peaks. Now you'll see I've highlighted already this one here. This is at M over Z129. And the reason I've done that is the difference between the M over Z of that and that is 15. So remember that's the molecule, the actual whole molecule causes that signal. So what could cause the loss of 15? Well, one of these methyl groups could break off. So it could be that one there, or it could be one of these here. Because losing 15 from 144 gives you 129. See, all I've done is just chopped off that end methyl group, drawn the structure up again, put it in a square bracket, and put a positive charge on the outside.